Welcome to Lifestyle Solopreneur, the community for entrepreneurs who put lifestyle first. Join your host, Flavia Barris, as she interviews successful lifestyle solopreneurs and shares ideas to help you find the perfect balance between lifestyle, business, and self. Flavia is an attorney, marketing expert, and founder of several online academies. She's been featured in major media, including BBC World News, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Post, ESPN Television, and more. Join us for this episode of Lifestyle Solopreneur. Hey, Lifestyle Solopreneurs. Today we get to speak with Matt Rod. He has defied convention and achieved financial freedom through a unique path. Honestly, it's one I have... He's our first guest with this path. He started with nothing and then built a high cash flow portfolio by buying and selling businesses, but not just any businesses. Wait till you hear the punchline. Today, he is a recognized authority in website investments using digital assets to generate wealth. He's a pioneer in this field. He was among the first to explore the potential of buying, building, and renovating websites. He now teaches beginners how to reach six and seven figure incomes using this strategy. Welcome to the show, Matt. Thank you so much for having me on, Flavia. It's great to be here. I love having you on because we've had quite a few, and anyone who's been listening for a while knows this, quite a few real estate guests because real estate lends itself really well to sort of passive income and, you know, having a lifestyle business or people who moonlight and do things sort of on the side or just need a new way to invest. And, you know, they're tired of stocks or other things they can do. So they turn to real estate, but you are our first sort of virtual real estate expert. And I am curious because the internet's only been around so long. So how did you end up doing this of, of all the different paths you could have taken? Yeah, it's well. That's a it's a really good story because, like a lot of your listeners, um, my my business partner is actually my wife, and we've been buying and selling businesses for the last thirty years. And like a lot of your listeners, we we've always been fascinated by this concept of passive income. And for us, rather than doing it through real estate, which is you know the traditional way to do it, we did it through buying and selling bricks and mortar businesses in the early days. So we started out as young entrepreneurs. We, you know, made all the mistakes. We're totally self-taught. We originally grew up on farms, and we we wanted what we really wanted was that leverage. For me, it was leverage on my money uh, or or time. And like I didn't ever want to work nine till five. You know, swap time for money. For Liz, her le- her leverage point. She wanted ultimate freedom to be able to live wherever we wanted and raise our family and have time freedom. So for us, business was the perfect vehicle, but bricks and mortar businesses are pretty tough. They take a long time. You're constantly reinvesting the profits back into the business. You've got to go into debt a lot, typically here in Australia. So we're based in Australia. So Flavio, like you said, once we started to see this thing called the internet come along in the late like in the early, well, say let's say early 2000s, um, we realized we could do what we used to do with bricks and mortar businesses, i.e. buy them, fix them up and keep them for cash flow or sell them. We realized we could do it a lot easier and quicker because we had massive leverage. We had no geographic borders. We're based in Australia. Literally, we all of a sudden had a 24-7 marketplace that was basically passive. So we go to bed wake up in the morning and we've made money. And even better for us, there are no geographic borders anymore. Most of our websites were based in the United States and we made money off advertising. So it was very, once we had the site set up, they were very passive compared to our bricks and mortar businesses. That's been our 30 year buying and selling business journey in a nutshell. So here's the part that gets me because a lot of what I do is in the real estate world. And we have this thing called flipping real estate, right? And many people know what that is. It's people who buy a property that could have some sort of sprucing up done to it to make it more valuable. So someone will go in, they'll buy a property. Maybe it's even very distressed. Maybe it had a fire or it needs a lot of work. And they will fix it up, resell it so that they can make a profit. So, you know, whatever the resale price is has to be equal to the cost of the renovations they did and obviously cover their original purchase price. And then anything above and beyond that is their profit and they can rinse and repeat. Now, I also know because I work in real estate, 
the dangers and sort of the risks involved are construction costs, you know, supply chain yeah. issues, uh, materials going up in price. You, oh, you're, you know, you had a crew and they were going to do the work and now they're off on some other job or they decided not to do it or they told you the price is going to be double. Budget goes up, eats up all your profit or whatever. Maybe the real estate market changes or you discover the the property that you thought was in pretty good shape and just needed some, you know, lipstick ended up need, having foundation issues or mold or something else. So it's it's high risk, pretty high reward, but you know, that's real estate. Tell me in the world of virtual real estate, right? You're you're buying and selling websites. What are some of like your nightmare scenarios versus your, you know, best case scenario, what you're looking for? Yes. Some important distinctions first. It's a really good analogy with doing, you know, the web real traditional real estate flipping that's pretty much what we do with websites and like you said we we want to make sure we're buying websites where we don't get into these major problems or major fix-ups we just want websites where we can do what we call a, a basic renovation or makeover and then we we keep tweaking them as we hold them and we improve them so it's like giving a you know the initial coat of paint a, a bit of a spruce up and there's a few, there's some very particular levers that we pull to double the website's profits or success. And namely, we're trying to fix up the, the amount of visitors that come to the site and also the conversions, and then also the dollars that we earn for every visitor that lands on the website. That's the main sort of aspect of what we do. So in terms of, like you said, Flavia, I don't want to use nightmare scenarios or, or you know, we, we're not looking for those. We're looking for what we, but I, I know what you mean. We we don't want to be making big mistakes when we get into these websites, just like with bricks and mortar real estate or bricks and mortar businesses. And I think the main thing that we do there is by very careful due diligence. And what we want to make sure that we are getting trusted, solid websites that have basically been sitting around for a few years. They're neglected by the owners. They're typically kind of underutilized. And I I guess it's like buying, what is it? What's the, the old real estate saying? Buying the worst house in the best street. So we're looking for websites in good niches that are just not, you know, typically the websites we're buying are what we call passion websites where they're that they're not set up by sophisticated internet marketers or anything like that. They're people who are passionate about blogging on a certain topic. And typically what happens after two to three years, they, they might lose interest, life gets in the way, and they're happy to sell them off at a good price. They're, they're the absolute gold because we know they're legitimate. They're, they've been you know genuinely built. They've got genuine traffic, genuine profits, um, some of them don't make that much money, so we can very easily monetize them. And I guess that's how we reduce our risk significantly is by knowing what are we going to do when we own this, like how to renovate it, how to fix it up, and also knowing how to do good website due diligence. So it's exactly like for you guys with real estate, you guys know you don't just buy the first piece of real estate that the the realtor recommends. You need to do your own due diligence and understand what are you getting into. It's exactly the same with websites. At the end of the day, honestly, they're just a little cash cash cow business. That's it. So there is risks, but at the end of the day, we're trying to minimize that risk by doing good due diligence on them. So with your expertise, you could probably also build websites from scratch. So what are the benefits of purchasing an existing totally. website versus yep. just kind of looking around saying, hey, that's a good topic and just doing it on your own from scratch? Yeah, that's a really good question. And actually, Flavia, we do do that. And we recommend that as a really good strategy because once you've got these skills, so the main thing that that stops people doing what we do is just getting those digital skills, right? And, but once we've, that's what we do these days, we teach people, particularly beginners, how to get the digital skills to do what we've done over the last 20 odd years. So in terms of building websites versus buying them, we actually suggest you do both. And the key difference is building websites is just takes up a lot of time and it's a slow burn. It might take a year or two for those sites to really get traction. 
So you can do that part-time in the background whilst you're working a nine-to-five job, or these days it seems to be a five-to-nine job, or at least here in Australia. But you can do this part-time in the evenings, both building and buying websites. Now, obviously, the biggest advantage to buying websites is you short circuit all those years of building up the website. So you just come in and you can literally buy instant cash flow. So the main thing is that I want to reiterate with buying a website, and it's like how we used to buy rundown businesses. We used to do exactly the same thing with bricks and mortar businesses and fix them up. We've literally just short-circuited all the hard work of starting up a business. And Liz and I have done both. And to this day, we still do do both. So we typically now have a portfolio of businesses or online businesses where some of them we've bought and we're fixing up and others we're just building from scratch and constantly building up. And the other cool thing about buying a website is you can literally find what we call diamonds in the rough. These are bargains, like like I described earlier, where people have neglected them. So not only are you short-circuiting the time to get that age and traffic coming in and, and a proven website, but you can literally buy very, very undervalued assets that can be hugely valuable in the right hands when you know what you're doing. So Flavia, we have students who absolutely blitzing this. And if I can share a perfect example of this is a young couple that we've coached for a few years now, Nathan and Alexa, they're, you know, laptop lifestyle couples. They, they, at the moment, they're living in Vietnam, I believe. They travel around the world, living off their laptop, doing what we've taught. And their last website that they bought, which falls into this category of buying a bargain site, it was a site off a actually off an Australian guy as about Australian gardening. And they bought it for $400, which is it's just a rundown. He'd had it for many, many years. He posted all these really cool articles about Australian native trees. And he had quite a few visitors to the website every month. And it was, but the main thing was it had been established. It was a very legitimate site. Been around for, I think, like five to six years old, this site was. And 400 bucks is nothing. It's really cheap. And now that site in their hands, because they know what they're doing, they do this all the time with these sorts of, we call them passion sites. They just, they're not gardeners, obviously, they're traveling around the world on a laptop, but they just use their team of writers and they fixed up that website. Today, we're heading into spring here in Australia right now, or we are in spring, and that now gets 80,000 visitors a month. And that website is making for Nathan and Alexa $4,000 a month passive or semi-passively. So they're not working on it themselves at all. It's an asset now that they could easily sell for six figures. And yet that site only costs them $400. So, And that's literally the gold here why you would buy a site rather than them trying to build a gardening site from scratch. A, they know nothing about gardening, but B, they just short-circuited all that hard work. So they were real. Now that wasn't a get rich quick thing. That's taken them realistically two years to get, no, one and one and a half years, maybe one to one to one and a half years to get to that point. And that might sound pretty slow to some of your listeners, but you've got to realize Nathan and Alexa have a bunch of other sites that they do this exact same strategy with. Some of them are a lot bigger than that. So when you think about it, this is a semi-passive strategy if you want to own a portfolio of the, these that can work very, very effectively for a low risk of $400, you know, and then they've got to put some money into renovating it. But really, it's not them that's doing the work. They're not working on that website every single day or anything like that. They just do a couple of hours planning with their team, and then they let their team run it. So it can be very, very leveraged by buying these bargain websites. What are some other fun stories or websites that you have personally been involved in where uh, you took a website and created something from it that uh, is pretty memorable to you? I think for Liz and I, when we got really excited about this, so I'll preface it by saying 
When people hear our story, they naturally assume that we're buying and selling e-commerce websites. So, you know, sites that sell physical products on Amazon and stuff like that. We do none of that because our background in buying and selling bricks and mortar businesses is physical products. We used to own manufacturing businesses and wholesale import businesses. Now, those sorts of businesses tie up a lot of capital. So when we got online, what we were looking for, we read Robert Kiyosaki all those years ago, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And we loved his idea of buying the equivalent of, say, laundromats, where you put in someone to run it and it's very leveraged to you. And so that's what we were always trying to do with our bricks and mortar businesses. And we realized with the online model, our biggest constraint as young entrepreneurs was capital, like money. We had to borrow money off the banks. You know, we were skating close to the edge financially many a time because, you know, you've got all your money tied up in physical inventory. Why is this important is because we started seeing, like I said, in early 2000s, this online space, and we realized we don't have to do any of that anymore. We can just have advertising websites or sites that are affiliates for physical products rather than us having to hold the physical inventory ourselves in a warehouse somewhere. We could just be an affiliate and we get like a 10% commission or 20% commission. So this was a game changer for us. Absolutely massive. And I remember Liz one day said to me, why don't we just do what we've always done with bricks and mortar businesses, but do it with websites? Why are we building these things? Let's just go out and start buying these up. And so we would email people in America with these little websites and or in very niche topics. And we would say to them, do you want to sell your website? We noticed you haven't done much work on it for a while. Um, we're in Australia, we're a cash buyer. And so coming to your story, one of the first sites that we bought, so back when we were doing it, no one, not many people were doing this. So I hadn't figured it out. There was no marketplace or website brokers for buying and selling websites like there is today. And we bought this, one of our first sites, sounds funny now, but we actually bought it off eBay. Liz was looking around where to buy it. And the seller was like us, there, there was no brokers. So he just stuck it on eBay and said for sale, this affiliate site. Now we bought this website and what got us really excited was it was, I think it was $19,000 US. It was making $1,900 a month profit. So that's a really, this was back in the old days when websites are quite cheap because no one was doing it. So that was a 10 times monthly uh, return on our money. And within a month of owning it, we realized that this site had a lot of visitors coming to it and it was going to some internal pages in the website. So you know how websites, like these are called content sites, and you know how websites have lots and lots of blog articles on them? What we discovered was two or three of the blog articles were generating most of the traffic. Most of the visitors were coming there, but there was no monetization on those pages whatsoever. So all we simply did was put our best affiliate offer onto those internal pages and the profit went from about $2,000 a month, pretty much doubled it to around $3,500 a month. And that was just with one afternoon's work changing around because we weren't very technical at the time, but we just changed around these affiliate offers and literally we had doubled the profits within, I don't know, less than what a week. And it was just one afternoon's work. And it was just a game changer. We looked at us because the very next month we started making three and a half thousand dollars. And this was passive. We did nothing else on the website in the first couple of months that we owned it. So we literally would wake up in the morning and, you know, the first of the month when we got the affiliate uh, money get wired to us, it was double what it was the month before. So three and a half thousand dollars US passive. And we suddenly looked at each other and went, this is cool. Let's buy 10 more of these websites. And then you're generating a significant income. And so that was our basically our strategy from that day forward. And we we absolutely loved it. To this day that we still do the same strategy. We look for the real quick, easy wins. That's an amazing story. I think listeners are probably, we're all divided into uh, two camps and maybe a combination of two camps. So there's people thinking, whoa, I've got, you know, the blog I did back in college that I kind of stopped doing because I got this job or, you know, yeah. whatever. So people yeah. are like looking at their own sort of inventory of underutilized assets thinking, awesome. 
how to get on that. And others are like, I don't have any websites, but I want to go buy one and do this. And it's not even flipping the website because you you buy and hold. You buy, renovate. Yeah, buy and hold. Yep. In real estate, it's uh, like those people that buy a house, fix it up, and then turn it into a great rental that'll just yep. generate income for, for years to come. So tell us, uh, for those people who are like, I got to go buy some websites, I know you offer coaching. Tell us about your program and how people can get in touch with you. Yep. So we, uh, this is what we love doing these days. We we because we came from a non tech background, like so we're not IT people at all. We grew up on farms here in Australia. We actually studied as zoologists. That's how Liz and I met at university, being zoologists. And we've always been our biggest mistakes that we made when we first started doing this was the tech side, knowing how to build these websites, how to renovate them. What do you need to do? And we know to this day, that's what holds everyone back. I'm guessing if you're listening to this, that is probably your number one fear of doing this. It's just, you know, you're probably an expert in real estate. We find a lot of our community members are experts in real estate and have made significant money in real estate. But the number one thing you need to learn is how to build a website, how websites work, and how to do website due diligence. And that is precisely what we've been teaching people for the last decade. Um, We love doing it. Our audience is worldwide, even though we're based in Australia. You can Google us. You'll see lots and lots of stories and success stories of our students who've done this. And Flavia, the number one thing that we teach, whilst you hear all these really exciting stories from our students, if you're listening to this, And you've never done this before. If I can give you one bit of advice is please just start out small, like buy a little tiny website under a thousand dollars, like Nathan Alexa did and learn how to, you know, prove this to yourself that you like this and that you've got this by buying a small, simple website under a thousand dollars. And the reason why that's important in our education business is it allows us to very effectively and safely teach people how to do this. We're not getting people to you know, quit their jobs on day one. It's not a get rich quick thing because there is significant digital skills that you need to teach. So at the eBusiness Institute, which is what we've set up, our specialty is training kind of burnt out nine to five uh, corporates how to transition over to online income. And And if you listen to any of our interviews or success stories, you'll notice a lot of our listeners are, In the older age group, typically with kids, typically burnt out from having pretty high corporate roles at Flavia, lots of lawyers. We have lots of, um, you guys work so hard and we're really good at teaching how to do what Liz and I have done for the last 20 odd years, which is buying and selling and renovating websites. That's our specialty. So much fun. Love all your stories. So eBusiness Institute dot com uh dot au correct for yes. yep uh, you so ebusinessinstitute.com dot au being in, in Australia and I love this little factoid about you because you're Australian you're in Australia but your last name uh Rod is Norwegian R A A D so Matt Rod R A A D and in yep. Norwegian it means good advice. Yes <laughs> which is yeah, I, I was saying <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah, and you know, here we are growing up in Australia on farms. And I said to Dad, "You know, it means good advice. That's what I do now." And he thought it was, you know, he's he's that tough Norwegian thing, and he just laughed and said, "Yeah, yeah, it means it's the Radhus. It means house of advice." And um, <laughs> Lisa and I think it's in our family. It's quite amusing that. I've become this, you know, advisor for high net worths and people that want to invest and stuff like that. So we we've always been ad- advisors for people buying and selling businesses, but of course these days we we love teaching people how to buy and sell website businesses. Dad and I love it that that's his surname. Good advice. So hopefully we are out there giving good advice to everyone. I think everyone should check out your website ebusinessinstitute.com com.au and uh, check you out and learn more about what you teach because it is such an interesting and unique topic and area of commerce. And uh, I thank you, Matt, so much for your time today and sharing your world with us. Uh, Thank you so much for having me on. Real pleasure to be here. Guess what, lifestyle solopreneurs? If you don't yet have an online business earning you enough passive income to live the life of your dreams, I'd like to suggest you consider trying out Kajabi. 
Kajabi is an all-in-one solution where you can create and teach online courses, publish a paid newsletter, launch a free or paid podcast, process payments, build one-on-one coaching portals for your clients, and much, much more. I personally use Kajabi to power numerous successful and profitable online businesses. Lifestyle solopreneurs, there's a free trial of Kajabi waiting for you at this link, www.kfreetrial.com. You can try Kajabi for free, no obligation, by going to www.kfreetrial.com. Again, kfreetrial.com, and that K stands for Kajabi. Starting an online business helped me break free from that corporate grind, and I hope it does the same for you. You have nothing to lose and absolutely everything to gain. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and see you next time.